Hey, hey pals, welcome to Frame and Fiber. I'm Paige Miller, and I'm so glad you're here. Here is Frame and Fiber. It is my picture framing and yarn shop in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. So if you ever find yourself at the Jersey Shore, pop in, I'd love to meet you. I have walk-in hours on Thursdays and Fridays from 12 to five, and on Saturdays from 10 to two. The rest of the week, I'm here working, but I'm not open to the public. So, hi, how have you been? I feel extra weird right now. That seemed overly jolly, like not genuine jolly, but I'm in a jolly mood. Actually, I'm in a jolly mood at this moment, but literally like an hour ago, I was the total opposite mood. <laughs> oh my gosh. I will talk about this kind of stuff in a little bit. Uh, in this episode, this is a making journal for the channel. I have a couple of finished objects to show you, a couple of works in progress to show you, some things happening here at the shop that I want to share with you, and you know, all the stuff that goes with that. <laughs> Let me show you first uh, a work in progress, nope, not a work in progress, a finished object. You know what? I didn't mention, let me just get this out of the way, contact information. In the down bar, I will list my website and my email address and my um, social media handles. So if you would like to follow me on other platforms or would like to get in touch with me, that information is below. I also will link below my Etsy store. So most of the yarns that I show you, I say that, but I realize my work in progress is not yarn that I sell here, but if you're interested in any of the yarns that I show you that I sell here at Frame and Fiber, you can check out my Etsy store. It's Frame and Fiber NJ on Etsy. So if you don't have a local yarn shop or a local frame shop, hit me up. I can help you out. Uh, any picture framing inquiries, please uh, send an email to my email address listed below. And I would love to help you with your picture framing. Okay, I think that's all of the... Um, all the things I need to share right so let's get let's get looking at this beautiful finished object I started this I think I started this in March I finished this I think the beginning of this month I finished it maybe even in May I may have finished it this in May I blocked it and it's gorgeous and it's worsted and Aran weight yarn held that I used together. And so this will be used in the fall. It's way too warm here in New Jersey right now. But I'm gonna cover myself up just for a second. Isn't it pretty? This is called the field. I'm gonna call it the field shawl. I don't know the exact title, the field. By Maxim Sear, who's also known as Max the Knitter. Uh, this is a delightful shawl to work on. Like, delightful. Look how cute that is. I love this half and half simple design. I just love the way this looks. I love that when you put it wrapped around your neck, that it is, um, I don't know, I just love it. I just love that the, the colors kind of block across my body. I think that's pretty cool. I think it'll look great with a coat in the winter. Um, it is big enough to, oh, it's a very long and not so deep shawl, although it kind of, you know, I made mine in worsted weight. The purple is worsted and the the variegated is Aran. They're really similar in gauge. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, this is a good one. I mean, I guess you could call it, it's close to Schlanket size. It's just, it's a little bit narrower than what you would expect from a Schlanket. It's perfect for winter time, everything. And I will be using this a lot. So let me tell you about the yarn. This is yarn that I sell in my store. It is Cascade 220. It's their non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool. It's a workhorse yarn. It's one of my favorite, just plain up, plain old commercial yarns. This is probably one of my favorites. And I paired it with 
So did I say it's worsted? It's worsted. <laughs> and then this is an Erin weight. It is the sweater toad base dyed by Toad Hollow. My pals over at the Hollow made the prettiest colorway. It is called Goodbye and it was in memory of their dog Spike. Spike and their cat Tabitha who passed away within a few months of each other. And they did this colorway in their memory and raised money for, I believe it was the local, I'm not sure which shelter, but it was for an animal shelter. I thought that was so cool. Um, and it's great. So I had three skeins of this. I used six skeins all together, three, of the, three and three. Um, I still have some purple left over. So, oops, let's see, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So I love the fact that I didn't do this on purpose. It just happened this way. But this skein, so there's like one skein there, two skeins, and then the third skein. And you can see kind of, it's hard to see these two right here, but they kind of fade into each other. And I think that's so cool. I did run out of this yarn and had to do a little bit of my purple on the end here. Um, in hindsight, I kind of wish that I had thought to do these kind of just every other, every two row stripes, this whole section, because then I think this color would have made it to the end. I'm not taking it apart because it does not bother me. I love the eye cord edge. The eye cord is around the entire piece. You knit from this end and you increase until you get to the center and then you decrease. All the decreases and increases are on the same side. So the top is straight and the bottom has this lovely triangle shape. I also love the I cord because on this side, to me, this is a reversible knit because you can't see where I wove in my ends because all of my ends are hidden in the I cord. So if you are a perfectionist when it comes to the way it looks at the end, this is a pattern for you. Or I think an I cord edge in general is a, is a uh, technique for you because you can hide all of those ends. This is grab and go knitting at its finest. There's very little thinking. And in fact, I used, um, what did I use? I used stitch markers. <laughs> I use stitch markers to keep track of my increases and decreases, so I didn't have to think. I just had to pay attention and move a, a stitch marker every four rows. I mean, it was super easy. I will be casting on another one of these for sure. I feel like this is something that I want to have going at all times because... Do you guys watch Stacy at Stress, Stress Knits? her podcast here on YouTube. She is obsessed with the half and half wrap. I think that's what it's called from post po Soho. <laughs> so nope. Pearl Soho. <laughs> She's obsessed. She's made a million of them. And it always makes me laugh every time I watch her podcast because I'm like, oh, there's going to be a new one. I think that's going to be me with this. <laughs> Guys, I love it so much. So the pattern originally calls for a DK weight yarn. I used a worsted weight. I can't remember offhand what the needle size is that it was called for, but I'm almost positive I just went up one size. Gauge is not crucial unless you are like really low on yarn, right? Like if I had done a gauge swatch, I probably could have avoided that. This doesn't bother me. It doesn't have to fit my body. <laughs> it just needs to be cozy. So, yes, I love it so much. I was inspired by a customer, my friend Michael, who is a good customer and sample knitter here at Frame and Fiber. Oh, I should show you the sample that he made up. I'm gonna go grab that. Um, he came in wearing his. So this, like I said, is Toad Hollow and Cascade Fiber Arts, Cascade 220. Michael made his using um, Quince & Co Phoebe, which is their 
super extra fine 100% merino base and it is like the squishiest yarn like it's so lovely and so he made his out of that I'll, maybe I'll put a picture of him here wearing his um and when he came in with that I was like oh my gosh like it looks so good it's funny I feel like this is one of those patterns that like you might see on Ravelry and just kind of pass it by because but in person and on your body it's fabulous uh, you know what, before I move on to anything, I'm going to go grab that shawl that Michael made. Okay, wait till you see this. Now, because I didn't plan on showing this to you, I can't remember the designer's name. This is a pattern that you can find on the Quince Co. website or on Ravelry. It is called Aleta or Alita, A-L-E-T-A. It is from their either 2022 collection of shawls. I think it's the 2022. It's really recent. It's either 2022 or like very end of the year 2021. It's a worsted weight yarn. This is made with Lark, 100% American wool. And it is gorgeous. Look at that. I'll put the designer name down here. So like I said, this is made with Quince & Co. Lark, which you can find at Freeman Fiber NJ on Etsy. Oh, thank you, Michael, for making this sample for the shop. Are you guys interested in knitting or crocheting for the shop? I'm always looking for new sample makers. I invite any of you to send me an email. You can find my email below. Did I say that already? Yes, I did. I said that. Sorry. <laughs> send me an email uh, if you're interested in knitting for the shop and we can work something out. <sighs> I want to send an email to my list of sample knitters. If you are a sample knitter and you haven't seen an email in 100 years, it's because I haven't sent one in 100 years. <laughs> I will be compiling something very soon and sending that out probably by the middle of July. Um, so if you would like to be on my list of sample knitters, comment below or send me an email. And if you already are on that list, check your email in a couple weeks. Okay. Oh, my eyes. Did I tell you guys that I went to the eye doctor today? Sorry, my nose is itching. It's wool. <laughs> I'm not allergic, but I'm very like, oop, gets stuck on my nose. <sighs> Sorry about my eyes. I'm probably squinting at you this whole time, and I'm probably not even looking at you. I'm probably looking at the viewfinder, which is not good. Um, I went and had my eyes examined this morning. First time in, well, right before COVID was the last time I went. So um, I think for the past 10 years, I've had a very mild prescription for distance when I'm driving at night, but my eyes have changed a lot. And not only have they changed a lot, but this is the first time that I've had them dilated where it's bothered me. Like I've, it's never bothered me before. So, oh, I want to wear these. Do you mind? Do you mind? Just for a little bit. Oh, the relief. <laughs> I just want to keep this on for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now I know when I get my eyes dilated, I'm not allowed to come to work because it's way too bright. So why am I telling you that? I don't know why I'm telling you that. I guess because I'm putting my sunglasses on. <laughs> I hope this doesn't make you leave. Please stay. I love you. Don't leave. <laughs> All right. So the next knitting The next knitting project is in my Daisy Lane Design Project Diary. This is one of my most favorites that she's made me. Um, I am a big fan of her flat bottom. I mean, that has a tiny little gusset, so this isn't a flat bottom. But close enough, the flatter bags that she makes, um, those are the ones that I prefer. I like 
the boxed bottom. They stand up nice. You can fold over the top and make a basket. I mean, you can do that with these too, but um, these are so much more, I don't know. I just throw them in other bags. So anyway, Allison made this for me. It has a chicken. It's the cutest bag, one of the best bags on the planet. Anyway, in this bag is my current knitting, which yes, it is a project, but it's not a big one. I'm just playing around. No, I'm not, I'm not playing around, I'm knitting. <laughs> so I went to Maryland Sheep and Wool this year and had a great time. I'm sure you've heard by now about how wet and muddy and stormy and just cold it was and how we all had the best time. Like the weather did not even dampen it, for me anyway. It did not, did not ruin my experience. In fact, it kind of like, it kind of made it more of an adventure. It kind of added to the like, I don't know, I love it. I love getting to wear my, my wellies, my little rain boots. I don't generally wear them very often, but I almost always wear them to Maryland. <laughs> so I love it. So I went with a whole bunch of pals and we rented a house together and it was lovely. Um, I got to see some pals in person that I hadn't seen either ever or in a while. There was a great podcaster meetup, which was super fun. It was great. We had the best time. Um, but while I was there, I didn't do too much shopping. Um, I mean, I did, I shouldn't say that. I did, en I did enough shopping. <laughs> I just didn't, um, I don't have a haul to share with you. I guess that's what I mean. Uh, but I am knitting with some yarn that I bought and this yarn is called Folktale Fiber Arts, um, sustainable hand spun yarn and fiber. So Abby is the owner of Folktale. Please follow her on Instagram or I think she sells on Etsy too, her Etsy. Yeah, she's folktale.etsy.com. The yarn that I have is a one-ply Targi, which um, Targi wool, silk, and bamboo plied with miscellaneous scraps of wool and wool blends. I love this. So she spins up her yarn, but always has little tidbits left over. And what she ends up doing is taking that Targi wool silk blend is the black. I'm plying it with all of the different colored scraps that she has. And it just makes for really fun, random stripes. So I definitely want to get my hands on these. She shares a booth with my friend Anne who owns Middlebrook Fiber, Fiber Works. Um, and it's super fun to see them at Maryland together. So I'm making fingerless mitts for Paul Miller and I to match. So that's my mitt, that's Miller's mitt. Miller's literally has mitts. I probably have like, I don't know. I don't know what mine are. <laughs> so his are bigger. I think, oh, I did, I'm not thinking, I did. I cast it on 32 stitches for Paul Miller and I cast it on 28 stitches for me. This is, I'm going to say that this is like a bulky weight, bulky weight yarn. So the fingerless mitts are going really fast. My thumb is, his thumb is 14 stitches and mine is 12 or 10. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I am knitting Paul Miller's second one. And this is ball that I have left over. Aren't they fun? And can I just show you, like this is hand spun by Abby. And I swear <laughs> it, it could, it looks like it could be commercially spun. It is so perfecto. So fiber tails. I am using a size 10 needle, magic loop, and if I don't say so myself, I think Paul Miller and I are going to be stinking cute in our matching fingerless mitts. 
<laughs> so that's what I'm knitting now. I don't have any other knitting on the needles. Um, as much as I want to cast on another one of those shawls, the field, I really feel like I actually need to, um, I need to get my sweater, sweater game going because right now it's like, it's dead. <laughs> A lot of you guys in the last making episode, um, suggested so many great cardigans to me to use or to make. So I just need to pick one and, and go for it. The Felix cardigan is up there. It's, it might be. So the reason why I haven't cast on the Felix actually, cause I keep looking at it going, why am I just not casting this on? It's perfect. It's exactly what I want. When you read the pattern, it calls for a worsted weight yarn, but then in the description, she talks about picking an Aran or chunky weight yarn. And so those two differences, those, that, that, those are three different weights. <laughs> so I just need to swatch and figure out what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so that's that. That's it for knitting. If you wanna see my finished object, my embroidery finished object, I would love to show you. Oh, okay. I think I showed this to you in the last episode as well. Just the, um, when it was a work in progress. So do you guys watch floss tubes? I watch a few and in the stitching world, they refer to things as finished objects and then finally finished objects or fully finished objects. This is an FO, not an FFO. So I gave it a bath yesterday and you can see it's a little wrinkly, but I will, this will all kind of work out once I stretch it onto its board. However, yeah, you can't really see it, but it does kind of come in a little, which I think is normal when you do this much stitching on fabric. Um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Like there's a few wrinkles there, but We'll see. I'll see if I can, um, if I can get that to straighten out when I, when I block or not block this. Well, I guess when I stretch it. My eyes. <laughs> I can't really tell what you guys are seeing because everything is blurry right now for me. Actually. Just use one eye. How about that? <laughs> oh, I had so much fun making this, you guys. Like, so much fun. So I did not pick these colors. Uh, well, I did. I bought them, but they were a so seven. I believe it's seven colors. Um, it was a seven color kit. Is that is it a kit or is it just like a pack of colors that were put together? Uh, this is. A company called Sublime Floss. Maybe you've heard of them. They're new to me. And I was on Snuggly Monkey, I believe, or Fat Quarter Shop. And I was just looking through and I didn't realize that you could buy little packs of, of floss um, kitted up without a pattern. So I thought that was fun. So I bought a few and this is one of them. Totally not my colors in any way. Like, but nonetheless super fun to knit with not knit with to stitch with i had a really fun time doing it like you can see here i started with the yellow and worked my way out to the green and then back to the yellow and then over here i kind of i kind of got a little bit this is where i i don't know i went a little bit i went, I went a little wild <laughs> and just repeated the colors that way instead of this way I got all kinds of fun stitches in here. Um, let's see, where's the first one? So I did some cross stitch and some chain stitches. I did some blanket stitching and French knots and piston. Piston. It's the French knot that has the line 
attached to it. It's these guys right here. Running stitch, back stitch, satin stitch, wheat stitch. Ooh, a woven stitch, a woven cross, a woven star. Is it a star? I forget what they called it. So I bought a, isn't that cool? You can kind of see how it's woven. The little star, that's the wheat. Um, I bought a couple stitch dictionaries so I could just reference and as I was going, just decide, oh, let's do here, let's do that. And so this is half of a pinwheel. Ah, it was just super fun. Super, super fun. This got very fancy. And I did right here, these little leaves are the dark green ah, and the lime green mixed together, which I thought was fun. super fun. So would this be a kit that you're interested in? Oh, FedEx is here. Hold on. Sorry. So question for you guys. Is this something you'd be interested in for a kit? Or if you were a kit buyer, are these the type of colors? I guess, what are my questions? So this is brandy new to me, right? The whole, um, like, <laughs> do you even know what I'm trying to say? This is brand new to me. The whole taking a drawing that I did, stitching it, and then offering it as a kit or a pattern for whomever would like it, whomever, whoever wants it. Um, so you don't have to tell me that you, yes, that's something I'd want. And then I'm expecting you to buy it. That's not my question. My question is, is this something that you would be drawn to? I just kind of want to get everyone's opinions on like yay or naying the idea of doing this as a kit. Um, and then I want honesty from you guys. Is it way too intricate and tedious of a kit? Should I do a simplified version? I mean, I definitely am going to do a simplified version because I should. Uh, but I'm just curious as to know if there's anyone out there who would like it to be this involved. Because it is involved. Like, this is not a sit down and stitch in a day or a week. This is a lot of stitching. I think this would look really cool on a jean jacket. I think this would look really cool simplified along like the hem of a dress I think would be really neat. This whole panel would look cool as a bag, right? Like Allison, I don't know, so many things. I, of course, am a framer, so I'm going to picture frame this. And, and... <laughs> I think I might enter it into, well, I'm not sure if I'm going to enter it. Ah, uh, sorry. I just looked outside and my eyes, Ooh, can I just put these on for a couple minutes? Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. So you might be thinking to yourself too, why don't you just record at a later time so you don't have to deal with this. And it's because I can't, this is like the only time this week I can record <sighs> and I want to be with you. <laughs> I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> um, I interrupted myself. What was I saying? Oh, I'm entering it into the county fair. Did I say that? Yes, I did. I may enter this into the county fair if these wrinkles come out and it lays flat. Lays flat? Lies flat. If it doesn't, then I have one of my other ones, which are not here, but I have an older one that I would enter that I did at the beginning of this year. I am pretty darn over the moon about this. Oh, hold on, hold on. Will you help me pick out the framing? I'm, I'm stuck and torn between these four frames. Okay. This is in no order. Like there's no, you know, super favorite. Super favorite? Super favorite. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Let's hold this like that. Number one. 
dark green. Number two, bright green. Now, I know which one I like better, but the reason why I am going back and forth between the two, I'll, I'll just tell you, I love this one. I like this one, I love this one, but this one is handmade by my friend Miles, and this one is made by me, so it's crazy more expensive. <laughs> so the price has me going, mm -hmm. Yes, even picture framers have to hem and haw about the pricing because picture framing is expensive. Okay, next, another green frame, which I think is kind of cool too. I like that it's not as bright green, so that maybe the other two, maybe the other two vie for attention. I don't know, but this one is green and gold, and I like that the gold picks up all the yellows. I like the texture, so that one is definitely a contender. Hello, little sparrow. Oh, there's a little birdie literally right here. Okay, and then I like this one too. See, I'm having a hard time. Then we've got this one, which is a really cool, um, it's made out of bamboo. It's just a creamy color. I think it looks really nice with the linen. And I like that it's more of a fade into the background. The reason why this one, I go back and forth is because this will hang with all of my other ones and they're all in brighter, kind of more bold frames. So I just don't want to get lost. All right, so there's the white one. The mellow green. The bright green. And the dark green. Okay. Oh, the other reason why the bright green. Okay, this one's my favorite. <laughs> this one is my favorite. It's very expensive. Which, do I need to be spending that much money? No. Maybe it is taking away, maybe it is buying for attention, stealing the thunder. Um, but also the other thing about this, if I do decide to put this in the county fair, I don't know if I'll get this back in time from Miles because he is in San Diego. So I'll give him the measurements, he'll build the frame and ship it to me. And it could take, well, this is the last week in June and I have to have this ready and to drop off by July of 24th. So I don't know, this might not be, maybe I should nix this one. So cute though. Okay. I mean, this is just as good. It's pretty good. Just running through them one more time. That one fits it better, doesn't it? Those are really bright. This one is not too intense. This might be the winner. So what are your thoughts? Okay, there they are. Tell me your thoughts. I have a framing finished object to show you. I realize I never show you finished objects, ever. Sometimes it's because they're just too big and awkward for me to hold here, but also because I always forget to do it. See, picture framing is my actual real job. The yarn has turned it into a real job, but really it's it's kind of my fun and my hobby still, even though it's part, part business. Um, so I never think of picture framing as something that anyone wants to see. That's stupid, but that's how my brain works. So my neighbor, Devin, who lives upstairs, she and her boyfriend, although hopefully they'll get married soon because they're the cutest couple. 
<laughs> they take their boat out onto the river, which is right over there. Like literally, if these apartment buildings weren't here, I could see it. Um, they take their boat out onto the river a lot. We have a bunch of different islands in the river and they will go out for lunch or dinner or whatever. And they were on Gull Island and she found the coolest scallop shell. And so she brought it in to me and we're like, we need to put that in a frame. I'm holding it like this so you don't get the, the glare. All right, look at the frame. How great is that texture? Look at the mat, the texture. And then look at that baby. So we're experimenting on this one. Um, experimenting, what do I mean by that? So Jamie and I were trying to figure out how to mount this. And a lot of times, with picture framing, you don't want to, you want to avoid glue or anything that's super permanent or super um, invasive. I say invasive, like it's invasive surgery. <laughs> but you want to try to avoid that as much as you can. And so because it's Dev and she's upstairs and she's my pal, she doesn't mind being a guinea pig. And so we're doing this with compression. And so this is plexiglass. Actually, it's not plexiglass. It's acrylic. They are two different things. <laughs> uh, acrylic. And then the mat board on the back, we um, backed it with another mat. So it's pretty, it's not as stiff as it normally would be if I used a different substrate. And we're just holding that in there with pressure. When I say pressure, it's like very mild pressure. Like it's not like there's, you know, there's maybe two pounds of pressure max because we have the wall here that we built on the inside to keep it from pressing and looking like it's rounding and like trying to like smother the front, the, the, the shell. So it's in there. <laughs> Did that just freak you out? I'm sorry. It's going nowhere. So we think this is a cool way to mount something like this. I wouldn't do it on something fragile. This is not a fragile shell. Um, I would do it on something fragile or something old or something, I don't know. It would, this is not an application that I would use across the board, let's put it that way. But for this, it's pretty cool. And so there's no glue touching it and it's totally preserved. And it's stinking cute. So I hope she loves it. Isn't that great? Such a cute little memory. I wish this was the shell that she found I wish Matt had like proposed to her. <laughs> I hope she never watches this. She'd be like, what are you doing telling everyone? <laughs> no. So there we have it. So that's for Dev and that is a finished object. So yeah, I want to show you more framing finished objects more often. I have a cross stitch whip that you've seen 5,000 times because I've worked on it intermittently because it's not, it's, it's a back burner project, but I'm super close to finishing it. And I'm super close because I think I want to enter this into the county fair as well. Oh my gosh, I have such a small smidge left to do. So I have this flower and the rest of that pot to do. And then it's done. So I'm showing this to you as a whip because it will be finished soon. This is a modern folk embroidery design. It's from one of his small pieces. I mean, obviously it's a square, it's a tiny small, tiny square. I did this on 40 count with one strand of DMC, but I believe in the, in the pattern notes, I think he says to do it on like a 36 count or a 32 count linen, I think. I'm doing it on a 40. So I can't wait to have this finished and framed. Uh, I didn't look at a frame for this, but I have a feeling I'm just gonna pick something really simple, um, like even maybe like a navy. Oh, oh, oh. Because it's the navy DMC and just leave it. Right? Yeah, that's it. So I'll just put it in that frame. I'm not going to bother putting it back. So the next time you see it, it'll be a finished object, a finally finished object. 
and maybe it will have been entered into the county fair. So is that all you need to know about that? I think it is. Oh, sorry, a white car went by. Oh, that hurt. Is that it for works in progress and finishes? I think it is. I talked about, holy moly, I forgot to tell you. I showed you this bag and told you that Allison of Daisy Lane Design made this, but did I tell you she's going to be here for a trunk show in July? July 9th, it's a Saturday from 10 to two, she will be here with a lovely assortment of her bags. I'm gonna put a picture here of some bags that she recently posted to the Instagram and said that they are here. So that's exciting. I just looked at a white car again. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, so she'll be here. So if you are in the area or if you'd like to come into the area and be with us that day, that would be fun. Uh, it's going to be a trunk show for people who want to buy from her, but it's also going to be a hangout because she lives in Colorado and she's not here in New Jersey very often and when she is she has so many friends and family to catch up with that she doesn't really get to connect with the fiber community about very very often or ever <laughs> when she's here so we want to make it a trunk show slash come hang out with Al uh, we will be I'll be having lunch so if you want to I think we're gonna do pizza so if you want to pop in and bring a couple bucks, I'm just going to say, you know, two bucks a slice. Is that how much it is? And we'll just buy that many pies. Or you can brown bag it and bring your own lunch. Um, if it's a nice day, I'll have chairs outside for everyone to sit. Um, because the shop will still be open, so I don't want to scare away my customers. <laughs> but generally speaking, uh, my fiber community here is pretty jolly. So... I don't think they'll intimidate anyone. <laughs> but if you are in the area, that's a good time. Come hang out with us. Bring your stitching. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's it for the making. Let's chat about what's going on here. Well, I guess it's not totally everything about the making because I'm hosting, or I will be hosting, a make-along. I'm attempting it yet again, pals. <laughs> I hope you'll join me. <laughs> so, Frame and Fiber turns 20 in July. I've had this place for 20 years. July is my anniversary month let's put it that way and I want to celebrate one because Allison will be here so I'm gonna kick off a make-along that weekend uh, so I was chatting with my friend Tracy and Tracy thought it would be fun if we kind of jumped on the tea and tank train wagon <laughs> that everyone is on right now um, you might already be making a tea or a tank and so we thought it would be fun to do that make along to celebrate my shop being 20 and Allison being here and it's summertime and yeah so we're gonna call it the summer tea along I'll put the hashtag here and you can share your pictures and progress on Instagram Please tag me so I see them. So let's break down the rules. Did I say that it goes from July 9th to August 20th? So it's a six week knit along or make along because you can crochet as well. There's all kinds of ways to enter. Um, obviously, if you want to make it out of your stash, that's totally fine. Everyone who joins in with us will be entered into the prize drawing. Um, so you get one entry for joining us. You get your second entry if you bought your yarn from Frame and Fiber. And you get a third entry if the yarn you bought from Frame and Fiber was specifically Quince & Co. Willet, Wimbrel, which is their cotton, or Kestrel and Sparrow, which is their linen. 
So you will get extra entries for that. And if you finish your project in the six weeks, you get an entry. So I believe that's five entries. I will count that and make sure. Um, and so when you post to Instagram in your description, just write down, you know, the yarn you used, where you purchased it, and there you go. <laughs> and then you'll be entered, and if you finished or not. So yeah, I think that'll be fun. Uh, it'll be a fun way to celebrate together. Uh, the prizes will be gift certificates to my Etsy store that you can use for anything in, in the yarn or in, in, in the shop. Um, so yeah. And when I say to the store, it's either Etsy or in my shop, personal. In, oh my gosh, in-person shopping. <sighs> so join us. It'll be fun. My friend Tracy came up with this plan. It's going to be great. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, Tracy also had some ideas too. She's so good. She, came, she sent me a note. So she came up with some ideas for patterns too that maybe you guys want to take a look at. One is called the Wild Flora Tank. Another is the Salty Air Tea by Samantha... Garen, Summer Noose by Elsabeth Judith. Um, she said that one's like all over the place right now. There's the No Need to Panic Sweater by Casapinka, the Anchors Summer Shirt, and the Anchors Tea. So I was thinking of even doing a tank or bralette from Jessie Maid because yes, that counts as a tea. If you want to do a cute little camisole, if you just want to make a sweater and then not put sleeves on it, <laughs> join us. It would be great. So yeah, frame and fiber is turning, turning 20. It's crazy. Hi, good morning. I'm editing <laughs> and I wanted to pop in real quick. I realized as I was editing that I was talking to you about the make along and all of the things that I want to do at the shop for 20 year, my 20 year anniversary. But I didn't mention to sign up for my newsletter. So please sign up for my newsletter. My email address is pagetheframer at gmail.com. So shoot me an email and let me know you want to be on the list. The newsletter is more comprehensive. I actually explain what's going on a little bit better. And I also have a few other things that I have planned to happen in July and August for my make along. Nope. Well, yes, for the make along, but also for my 20 year anniversary. So that'll all be listed in the newsletter. So please join me and sign up for the newsletter. Okay, back to the video. Have a good day. I think we'll leave it there then. I think that was enough. I think you're probably sick of me by now. I'm glad you were here. I'm glad we got to spend some time together. Um, I hope you like the things that I'm making. I would love to hear from you. If you would comment below and let me know if you want to chat about anything I showed or if you have anything you just want to share. If you have any prayer requests, I'm always praying and I will always pray for you whatever you need prayer for. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay, kids. Until next time, happy stitching and be well. Bye.